Now, a last-minute hearing will be held this morning in the case of 12-year-old Archie Battersby, hours before doctors are due to withdraw life support treatment. Now, Archie's been on life support since April. I am pleased to say that we are joined by Archie's mum now, Holly. Uh, Holly, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being with us. I can't imagine what you're going through right now. Just, um, just tell us, how have the last couple of months been for you and the family? Um, an emotional roller coaster. It's been very draining. Um, stress levels are through the roof. Uh, it's very heartbreaking. Um, yeah, it's been a very hard couple yeah. of months, few months. But look, our hearts go out to you, uh, Holly. Just tell us, where are we with this now? Because there was a decision made by the High Court uh, last week, um, which has now been uh, sort of uh, put in stasis by the government. So where are we currently with the situation with Archie? Um, so today we, uh, we have an online um, hearing with the court to hopefully intervene and put that um, injunction in place to stop the hospital withdrawing the life uh, support today at 2 p.m. And how were you guys feeling about how successful that could be? I don't know, really. I've, I've not really... I've, I guess because of all the um, court appearances and things that we've had now, and it seems to everything, apart from obviously hearing uh, the appeal that we won, everything seems to go in the Trust's favour. It's just left me feeling very anxious all weekend. I've carried a lot of anxiety here in my chest. It's just, it just feels awful. Yeah. I mean, and you've got your, your family and, and people around you who are supporting you, of, of course. I mean, how have the, the trust been outside of the decision, of course, which um, you, you disagree with? How have the trust been in terms of supporting you guys and the family to make sure you can get through this? No support whatsoever. Absolutely none. Um, I know they come across to the media as supportive and compassionate. It's very much the opposite. It's very misleading. I mean, it's really disappointing to hear. I mean, it, when you say no support at all, just describe what it's been like. Uh, well, they handed the letter over on Saturday night um, with the choreographed execution of my son, uh, which just, it's just, as I say, it's the anxiety in my chest. All weekend, I don't even know how Paul's felt. We haven't actually spoke, but he hasn't even received the letter yet. I had to send him a screenshot. You know, there was no meeting, um, sat down and broken too gently. It's, this is what's going to happen, followed with a set out of mortuary details. You know, things that any parent shouldn't have to go through. It's, a, it's just caused so much stress. You know, it, this could have been totally prevented you know, and handled totally different to how it's been handled. We shouldn't have been dragged through the courts. No, I mean, how would you, how would you have preferred it to be handled? And just, and just tell us again, so that they gave you a letter, they didn't sort of take you away and sort of have a, a proper conversation with you? No, they gave one of the nurses um, a letter to come in, hand, hand us a letter. Um, no sit down, you know, do you need to talk or just handed this letter and just left to deal with our own feelings. I mean, that's just incredible. Obviously, hospitals have a, a, a duty of care. So, I mean, you've written to the health secretary. Uh, I mean, I, they, they watch this show. I mean, what would you want to say to, to those who have control over the way that the, the trust is working, the way that the hospital's dealing with you and your family? I think it needs to be looked into thoroughly. It's that uh, we're not the first family that this has happened to. And I'm guessing if this is how the other families has, have been handled, you know, it does need looking into. I think you need to put yourself in the situation of the parents that are going through this. You know, this is an extremely difficult time. It's so traumatic. And to just be dragged through courts and no empathy, no compassion, it's, it's shocking. It's, it, we're citizens of this country, you know. It's, it's not right to be treated like this. It's, it does need looking into. Now, the government have, have stepped in in some way to um, for this next stage before this decision that was made uh, to, to switch off life support at 2pm. I mean, what do you um, think the Health Secretary, Steve Barkley, can do? Sorry, I couldn't hear that car went past. No, it's, it's OK, Holly. I, I was just saying, obviously, 
at this point, the government have intervened in, in some way to try and make sure um, that this is looked into further. It's going to go back to the courts. What would you want to see the government do at this stage? Just to overlook the decision that um, the justice system make, really. You know, it's uh, we shouldn't have to go outside our justice system to do the right thing by the citizens in this country. You know, this is a 12-year-old, this is a child. You know, they say about Archie's best interests that I don't believe for one minute that Archie's best interest would be to put his parents through what we're being put through. Our little boy wouldn't like that. You know, I just uh, I think that it needs overlooking. And I'm very grateful to the Health Secretary for obviously doing what he's done. Very grateful. Um, I just hope that it is overlooked um, within the court today. Mm. And obviously you're at the hospital, you've been with Archie all weekend and for the past couple of months. Um, tell us what it's, what it's like being in that, in that room with him and, and how you sort of pass the time when you're with your boy. Uh, I've got a regime that I go through every day with him. Um, his exercises, his videos, I've had lots of, um, so many messages, lots of professional boxers sending him um, voice clips and video clips. You know, we go through that every day. Um, his music, his, uh, his brain stuff uh, that I put on his earphones for him. Um, just pass the time like that, really. It's, you'll be surprised how quick time goes by not doing much, really, and just sit talking to him. Yeah, and you, and you talk to him, don't you, of course? I mean, I'm sorry to ask you this, Holly. I mean, what do you, what do you say to him? What do, you, what do you talk to him about? Have you told him about the lionesses? Just talking. <laughs> um, no, just uh, just every day sort of talk in general, you know, who's coming up to visit, the messages that have been sent for him, I read out to him, um, what his brother and sister are doing, just uh, just general conversation that I would have if Archie was awake, really. It's, yeah, just normal conversation. Yeah, of course. That he's going to be uh, fine, it's... you know, we're going to get through this. Just making sure you're supporting him. Look, Holly, it's been really, really good to talk to you. Um, a decision will be made, obviously, later. Um, uh, and I wish you, you and your family all the very best. Uh, Holly Dunst there. Well, the right to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.